Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. A quick public service announcement to any Fandom Menace channels or any such related channels that you know who you are. Before we get to the preceding video, please take out your copium masks. Place it firmly over your face to ensure there is a tight seal as to not allow any of the copium gases to escape. Then what you're going to want to do is take a long five second inhale and hold it like so. <gasps> Then exhale. <sighs> Repeat as needed. If you have any children amongst you, please ensure your mask is securely placed over your face before you assist the child. Be sure to keep these on hand as we go through the video because sometimes even the most basic information can require a near lethal dose of copium. <sighs> <sighs> Don't ask me why I have this. It's none of your goddamn business. So episode three of The Acolyte has premiered, and it's now only a few days old, and already you have certain members of the fandom outraged and in a complete uproar over the typical moral panic they've put the usual three seconds of thought into that now require me to make this however many minutes long this video turns out to be, explaining why it is just nonsense. Now keep in mind, the rest of this video is going to go into details about the Acolyte story and plot that if you don't want to have spoiled for you, you might want to turn the video off and leave, but if you don't give a shit, or if you already know, stick around and let me explain where everything went wrong for these people, okay? So essentially the whole crux of what this outrage is about has to do with the fact that in this episode, it is revealed that the main character Osha and her sister were born through the force rather than actual parental diddling, to say the least. Similar to how Anakin was born. And now you have certain people of the fandom, certain channels on YouTube in a complete outrage and uproar because apparently now, oh, the force can be just used for whatever the creators want it to be used for. Oh, now it ruins Anakin. It makes him not special anymore. Or that it breaks canon or ruins the mystery of this mysterious power. Well, let's get into that. First things first, the idea that, oh, the creators are just using the Force for whatever they want the Force to be used for, as if that is a thing that has never happened in Star Wars? Let me just break this down for you. Anyone who has told you that the Force is anything other than a plot device used to move the story along in areas where it is convenient, or that they have an in-depth understanding of how this magic works, has lied to your face. Take, take, keep this on hand, remember, it's, it's, it's here. The Force has always been used however the creators of the story have wanted it to be used for, even at times being completely inconsistent to earlier bits of lore that they present. Nowhere in A New Hope is it ever established, given that this is the first movie Star Wars was building its lore on ever conveyed the idea that the Force could ever be used for something like the Force Pole. But when Luke finds himself in the Wampa Cave stuck to the ceiling and his lightsaber conveniently out of reach, he conveniently suddenly has the power to reach out with the Force and Force Pull it to his hand to help free himself. And this kind of stuff happens throughout all of Star Wars, where the Force, from Force Lightning to Force Speed Running to literally the Force Kick to explain away a bit of poorly timed choreography, the Force has always been used as a convenient plot element. But what's weird about this argument, though, is that it's being made about a power that has long since been accepted as real and having been in existence since, at the minimum, the prequel era. But showing it having an earlier existence in history somehow breaks canon or is the creators just using the force for whatever it wants? It's already been used in the story before. It's already been used in Star Wars before. So how can this be an act of the creators just using the force for whatever they want it to be used for? That, that doesn't make any sense. If it was already used in the force, there is no reason to suggest that it couldn't have been used in a prior date. If anyone has a canon source that they would like to cite that states that Pelagius was the one who invented this power and he was the one that created Anakin and it's confirmed without any doubt in explicit detail that this power has never been used at any other point in Star Wars history, okay, that's one thing. And if you have that kind of source, place it in the comment section below and I'll look into it. But from all research that I have been able to drum up, 
anything in relation to Darth Pelagius or his use of this power to create Anakin, for example, is left between this area of vagary or just outright non-canon. And I'm sorry, I just believe Wikipedia and a very simple Google search more than outrage baiters that rub shoulders with notorious liars. But that's just me, that's just me. You know, just get your copium out and just... Now if your argument is, well, it ruins the mystery. Fun fact. Ruining the mystery for you, factually speaking, is not breaking canon. Keep it on hand. I'll, I'll keep pulling this out every time I think you're going to need it. Okay. But really, the idea that it ruins the mystery is sort of a silly cop-out because it really doesn't. Because if we're just going off the notion, like going off of the previously established lore, for whatever that's worth, uh, let, let's just go ahead and say, for all intents and purposes, they're, they're, the lore is out there in complete confirmed detail that Pelagius, yes, was the one, in no vague terms, to invent this power and used it to create Anakin. Let's not even, let's just say that so we don't even have anything to argue about or dispute, okay? Let's just say that for the sake of argument. Was there ever any detail brought up as to how Pelagius discovered this power? I would assume not because the argument is about it ruining the mystery. So I'm assuming that in relation to Pelagius discovering this power and using it to create Anakin, the details of how he came about such a power is left rather vague. Possibly just he discovered this power through his meditation or research. If those are the parameters of allowing this mystery to remain so, I fail to see how the mystery is ruined when this newly established witch cult feature a similar power but with no less explanation as to how or where they discovered such a magic. Or maybe your argument has more to do with, well, it's not about that, it's just about now we know where Pelagius discovered this magic from. Why is that an issue? On some level, he had to have discovered this power from somewhere. Now we have a historical point in time that shows where he could have learned this power from. But if that's what ruins the mystery for you, it seems like a rather petty reason to get so upset. But of course, people of the Phantom Menace don't get upset about petty reasons. Ever. You know who you are. Again, if anyone has a source that they would like to place down in the comments below, detailing in no vague terms how this breaks canon, I would love to see it. But from all research that I've been able to find, no such canon sources exist. Now, I have been aware that the creators of the show have made certain things about Pelagius canon. I haven't found that much detail in regards to such a claim, but keep in mind that them making certain parts canon, or a character canon, does not necessarily mean they've made every single action they've ever created or ever done in the Star Wars Extended Universe lore canon as well. For example, the sequel trilogy runs starkly different than the EU and Legends novels, with certain similarities here and there, sure, but apparently in The Rise of Skywalker, Darth Revan is made officially canon. I don't exactly know where or how. I think it might have had to do with one of the statues featuring Revan. Sure, maybe that is the, the creators making Revan canon to Star Wars and its lore. That does not necessarily mean they are making all of Revan's history canon. They are just saying this character did exist, but that does not inherently mean every action he's ever made is canon to the story, until stated otherwise. So if the show creators stated at any point behind the scenes and not actually within the movie that, yeah, oh yes, we, we took a lot of inspiration or uh, brought a lot of things of canon from this specific book to our show to canonize it, that does not necessarily mean every single factor about it is canon. So if you have this non-canon source that they are deriving this information from, unless they have specifically said the entire book is canon, I would probably say that you you might have jumped the gun, which again, these certain people of the fandom who definitely don't drum up moral panics every other week wouldn't do something so impulsive, to say the least, would they? Just saying. 
But lastly, maybe it's the argument that, well, it uh, ruins Anakin because it makes him not special. I mean, again, this doesn't ruin canon or character assassinate anyone or whatever, I'm assuming, drug-infused hysteria that you are driving this all from. But the first child born in a literal century under similar circumstances as this mysterious power has shown is still pretty goddamn special, actually. Especially when he is still in relation to the prophecy. But maybe you're one of those pessimists who think that his prophecy was ruined regardless. So, I mean, I, I, that's not something I'm going to go into in this video. Let's just focus on Anakin. But in fact, now that we have this historical reference point, to children being born under these kind of similar circumstances that the Jedi know about, it actually does give us a lot more insight into why there were certain Jedi of the Jedi Order that, at the time of Anakin's arrival, were a little more apprehensive about accepting that he was, in fact, the Chosen One right away. Because, as a history that they would know of, there were already children that were born a hundred years earlier under these same similar mysterious circumstances, but it, it didn't pan out to lead to the end of the Sith like the prophecy foretold. But at the same time, this is the first child born without the aid of a cult as far as they know, showing up at the exact same time as a Jedi Master giving his own testimony that the Sith have returned, thus still giving Anakin a lot of credence as a special person to the Star Wars universe in relation to his prophecy. But if your mind said, well, he's not special anymore because two other children were born essentially earlier under the same circumstances as him, I would say that's some heavily copium-laced moral panicking you're doing there. If you think someone is only special if they're the only ones. I gotta say, there isn't a whole lot that actually makes anyone in Star Wars special then. In, in regards to Anakin, I mean, it certainly isn't the fact that he's force sensitive when there's literally thousands, if not millions of people who have access and the ability to use the force. It can't be that he was unnaturally old to start his training as a Jedi because Luke starts his training at a much older age. It can't be that he was a Jedi that broke the rules. We've seen plenty of Jedi break the rules on a constant level in Star Wars. To me personally, Anakin was always special for the simple reason not having to do with anything in relation to a prophecy or how he was born, but the fact that he was such a good person that fell to darkness in such a way that the people who knew him best thought he was irredeemable. He could not be saved, but was able to be brought back to the light when shown the proper amount of love and mercy at the right time by the right person. But shocker, lots of fans seem to have this very skin deep admiration for this character to the point that when these little details are even slightly tipped, the entire pedestal they put them on crumbles. And I just frankly don't find that very respectful of the character. If you actually do admire the character in any way or hold them to such esteem in your heart that, oh, because two other children, twins, were born at an er a century earlier. And, that, and those being the only children so far that have ever been born under the same circumstances as Anakin. And that just <sighs> destroys Anakin to you. Makes him not special to you. By all means, explain to me why I should take you seriously.